Let's get into it. Bullet uh, Train is here. The movie that you didn't know you needed, or maybe you don't need. <laughs> Brad Pitt plays an assassin who has, there's a, a woman in his ear. There's a woman in his ear. Some woman in a chair somewhere is, is helping him out. And he's on a mission to, of course, what? Get a briefcase. There are lots of other assassins. They're after the briefcase. There are there are vendettas that are going to play out. There's Lemon and Tangerine, two twin assassins. They're not really twins. They're not really twins. One is that guy from Eternals. The other Ryan one, Tyree Henry. Yeah. Right, and then the other one is uh, Aaron guy, Taylor Johnson. Aaron, yeah, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Who I didn't wreck until the end of the movie. I'm like, oh, yeah. That's him. Uh, yeah that's I didn't realize that was him either. And, and I'll be honest, he's he's the best character in the entire movie. He's he's one of the best characters. I like Brad Pitt. He kind of takes us through this, but mm -hmm. it's it's tons of cameos, including uh, uh, the 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 character from The Boys. Her name escapes me. Alan, you have it oh. up on your screen. <laughs> She's in The Boys. You know the yeah. She plays the woman who. who puts brings the food cart around in any case let's oh, let's yeah. get into it it's the story is super simple it's just these assassins one up one upping each other trying to stay alive trying not to die fighting in a lot of uh a, most of the movie is fighting in close quarters in sort of creative like using a briefcase using a knife using a gun, but having to keep it quiet because you don't want people on the train to be alarmed. There's a quiet car where there's a discussion happening. Actually, you can see in the picture in the background, uh, Brad Pitt's having a discussion, but they're in the quiet car. So they've got to be, they've got to be really quiet. I'm going full ASMR here. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm going full ASMR. And that, that scene plays out. So um, what the film feels like it feels like a graphic novel. It, I'm, I'm fairly certain this must have been based on some sort of comic book, a manga or whatever, but it definitely has that graphic novel feel. It's clever at times. It's grating at times. There are too many characters. After a while, you're like, do we have to introduce more new characters? You know, as the movie wraps up, you've got Michael Shannon comes in as a big bad near the end. Um, and, and then there are uh, two really good cameos that, that kind of made the audience gasp and laugh. Uh, <laughs> so, so, oh, so really? that, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe one of them laugh and then one maybe cringe. Can I just say yeah. that? One laugh and one cringe, but, but yeah, so, so, but I, here, here, here's, here's, here's my problem with this thing is sort of a couple of major problems. One, it's, there are too many characters, so it's hard to get invested, um, especially when they're getting killed off left and right. Second, you don't know like, well, who am I, who, who am I following on this journey? Obviously it's Brad Pitt. Second thing is, is the effects, the special effects are wildly, um, they're all over the map. There's stuff that's mm -hmm. really cool. And there's stuff that looks like the team behind she Hulk did the digital effects. I mean, in, in particular at the end of the movie, uh, not, this is not a surprise. The train crashes. I think that's <laughs> in the trailer the train crashes at the end. It's called bullet train. It's going to crash. Right. And some of those effects look so cheap. It looked like a PS three game. Like it was just like, are we just, who are we hiring to do these effects and how many hours do, were they overworked? Because clearly it's just that like some of the effects are, I don't mind. Like if you're consistent, like fine, that's the style, right? But really good effects mixed with effects that are just like, just sloppy really threw me off. So now look, was it fun? Yeah, it was fun. Is it dumb? It is super dumb. It is super dumb. So, but it's also like this movie is like 20 minutes too long, which is just sort of like, oh, like, like, can it just, um, and I'm pretty sure that they cut a lot of characters down. You, you can just tell that maybe they had more for certain characters to do. What I do like are, 
What I did like about the film was a lot of the payoffs. There are payoffs with characters. There are payoffs with, um, there's a Fiji water bottle that has its own journey. And you kind of get, this is where it begins to feel like a graphic novel is the way mm -hmm. that certain parts of the story are told. And you hear, you, you see this sort of journey of a Fiji bottle and kind of like how it, how it begins and how it meets its end. And it's, it's, that part is very funny, but I feel like the movie would have been more powerful if it was just, just tighter. Yeah. So no, um, it, was, it was a novel. It was based on a novel, a novel, but it feels like it was a graphic novel. Yeah, like it's very, very, very comic book, very graphic novel, very much like, you know, stuff that like you can see that certain moments would make like a great splash page. Well, that, that was the stylistic novel. tone of this movie. Uh, right, I think it right. was trying to be a graphic novel. And uh, yeah. I don't think it worked. Um, you know, I, okay. My, my feeling throughout this whole movie was, you know, I, I should be loving this, but I'm not. Uh, I, I really should be awe inspired, but I'm not. And and I think part of it is there's this it, there's a graphic novel style to it, but there's also this kind of a Guy Ritchie swagger that they're trying right. to emulate, and they don't they can't do it. They they the the issue here is you don't care about these people soon enough to buy into that swagger. They don't earn that that swagger, and I think they try to buy it by just simply having Brad Pitt in the movie, and that he would bring uh, a level of gravitas to it and it just it just doesn't work and so i'm kind of sitting there going well this is fun there's a lot of good action but i'm just not invested in anyone at the moment right and then you mentioned the the graphic the novel feel to it you know I, I felt like this movie would have been a million times better if it was a either shot with an entirely japanese cast with subtitles or take the setting out of japan and move it to like chicago or new york because I, I don't want to bring race into it, but I will, and I am. Uh, it takes place in Tokyo, um, but everyone except three characters are are basically non-Asian. They're white, and um, and it's it's kind of like they they feel sort of out of place at that moment. In this, I, I mean, I've never been on a bullet train in Tokyo, but I would imagine the uh, Asian to non-Asian ratio is a lot higher in real life than it is here. Um, I'm not saying that 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 makes it a bad movie or that they're uh, you know they're culturally appropriating, but it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel authentic at all. Uh, that part didn't bother me, but what it did, but but it of does. Of course have, not. <laughs> but the thing that did sort of like, I mean, the the, the graphic novel thing, you could see that it would just seemed like mm -hmm. a little too much, yeah. like in your face. Like every character introduction, they had to have like a little like. That sort of, and you're right. It was sort of Guy Ritchie, Guy Ritchie wannabe, is mm -hmm. what it is. So, um, I, at at the end of the day, though, I, like, did I have fun? It's like, yeah. Will yeah. I see it again? Never. Um, would I recommend it? Mildly. The the. I mean, let's 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 be real. Not a lot of big movies opening until maybe October. It's slim pickings for the next several months. But I will say this: not when it comes to indie films. Not when it comes to indie films. Mm -hmm. There's there's so much good indie stuff right now. So um, I, I, I would just say I would mildly recommend the film. Just a mild recommendation. Set your expectations low, and you'll probably have a decent yeah. time. Alan, what what are your what are your final thoughts on? Yeah, this? I, I feel the same way. I mean, if if any of this sounds interesting to you, um, yeah, go see it. You you'll probably have a good time, but. You know, don't expect anything overwhelming. Don't expect anything awe-inspiring. Um, it's just, uh, it's just an okay movie. And uh, and and I think what my disappointment is is it could have been much better than it was. Right. And, right. And I don't think they understood what what they needed to do to make this better. Um, the violence and the gore is there, but I don't feel like they pushed it far enough to. Right. You know, it's, it, it, I had to wince and turn my eyes at points, but it wasn't enough to to make me you know, say, hey, you've got to see this movie. Let's go to comments here. Retro yeah. Nerd Girl says, Aaron Taylor Johnson plays a twin again. <laughs> yes, but the yeah. joke is they're not really twins. You know, and that's the joke. Yeah. So there you Honestly, go. that joke actually worked. That joke worked. That joke worked. worked. Their, their, relationship, I, I, their relationship is is funny. Aaron that's Taylor Johnson, uh, honestly, is the best thing about this movie. Yeah. Holy Hand Grenade, smoking aces on a train. That's basically what it is. Yeah. Uh, 
FP Sunny says, does it preach the message? Guess what? No. No. No, no, no message. It's still no, a no. Japanese story and there's so uh, no American wokeness in it. Yeah. I, I, so on that, it's probably going to get a, a, a an extra like recommend, right? Like maybe more. That's why it's sort of a mixed review for me. It's mm. like, no, but there's stuff I kind of liked. It's not woke. It's fun. It's just not... Um, just parts of it are yeah. gonna are, but, are gonna be frustrating. But I will say that the, the I've heard already criticisms about the American cast in a Japanese story, and so really, that, who yeah, cares? Yeah, yeah I, right. know. I could care less about that. <laughs> Lubitsch touched me says Gore ASMR. Mm. Womp Biscuit says I do love Michael Shannon. Great in Iceman and Runaways. His General Zod yeah. was great too. Says Womp Biscuits. He's he's good in this, but he's just like every performance is over the top. Mm with the exception of Brad Pitt that kind of grounds it, but everyone yeah. else is sort of in a heightened version. They're all comic book characters. He's Cooper. like the assassin who's who's found a new new lease on life and is very zen or trying to be zen. Right. He's sort of yeah. zen about things, but he has bad luck. Constantly, mm -hmm. constantly bad luck is following him. Uh, Goober, as if Smoking Aces and Deadpool had a baby who wasn't as talented as either parent. Yeah. I would say that's an apt description. Yeah. Kicking Impossible, um, at least it's not another superhero movie and not focused on the message. At this point, B-movie schlock is refreshing. Hey, 100%, 100% on that comment because that's what this is. Um, does Zazzy Beats have a decent role at least, says Spidey Sensei 72? She's in it briefly and it's entertaining. Yeah, there's meat to the role, but yeah. it's not very long. It's not very long, but yeah, she's. I like Zazzy Beats. Zach's says but chris talk about the important stuff what percentage of the grips working on bullet train identified as bipoc i don't <laughs> think anybody cares so there you go thanks um the nerdy ronin great content as always guys thanks again chris for celebrities poop and autographing it for me oh that's right if you want to get free stuff um and i've got a limited supply now i've been sending out i just sent out another batch of like um because people are sending me self-addressed stamped envelopes so you can send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Film Thread 5042 Wilshire Boulevard, PMB 1500, Los Angeles, California, 90036. Send me an envelope with stamps already on it. Put a lot of postage on it. I will fill it with free gifts. So the Nerdy Ronin, glad that package arrived. By the way, going back to my last comment, the, the BIPOCs in the yeah, yeah. I, I can guarantee you that the Asians built the railroads. The, so, uh, yes, that for sure. Not a lot of diversity on railroad. <laughs> production uh the bad bandito says uh robert lewis says nick and nora's infinite playlist had a similar shtick with a piece of gum oh interesting uh laugh my ass off laugh my ass off fiji bottle character arc says holy hand grenades that's true it is there's a character arc for the fiji bottle that's not a joke yeah, Martin, but I, just, I, I felt like it was just there for, as a joke I, I you know it's a joke it's a joke it's, it's a cheesy yeah, it, joke you know they're making a they're forcing a connection or they're forcing this kind of gag and it, it it was amusing and i liked it but you know it's not that monumental cool uh munchkin says why is dumb film threat john wick isn't literature but it's super fun yeah that makes sense that, mm -hmm. i would say that like yeah it's it's but this is just like and john wick especially that last one just went so over the top you're like how is he alive he fell off a building it just doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Is he in hell now? I don't know. Yeah, well, um, I mean, the thing about this movie is it. it there's nothing. The, the difference between it is you cared about John Wick from the right from the beginning, right? Uh, especially after they killed his dog and his wife. True. Uh, so there's an emotional connection there. You you don't get that. You just have Brad Pitt. You feel bad for him, and we're supposed to connect with him for some reason because of that. A Munchkin also goes on to say, "Does Sandra Bullock get used at all, or is she wasted?" Uh, it's a cameo. Yeah. She, she probably had fun that day. She probably had fun the day she was on set. Exactly. Uh, Ken Bogus. I never liked Guy Ritchie. Always felt like he was trying to be an edgier Tarantino without the talent of Tarantino. Makes sense. And Fabio yeah. Barbanti, Barbanti become a new YouTube member. Thank you for that. Dempsey says, yes, having people of the wrong race for the area is a great way to take out the viewers sus mm -hmm. suspension of disbelief. I'm with Alan on this one. Amazon's rangs of power, for example. Uh, yeah. Oh, yellow flash too says bullet train sucks. No, it's just, it's just okay. It's yeah. yellow flash. Thank you for watching. Um, it's, it's, it's dumb. It's not one thing here is on the positive side. It's not woke, which is like, a thing of like 
in <laughs> with movies now is like this this thing where just you go and you're like, oh my god, thank god a movie's not woke. Now can it just be a good movie? It's like yeah, yeah it's not a topic. I mean, it, it, it's funny. I think we do recommend movies just on that fact that it's not woke, and so. But but I I will say midway through I'm kind of like okay let's let's just get the story going let's mm-hmm. let's move this along exactly thanks yellow flash always enjoy uh, yellow flash's content subscribe to his channel Dempsey says 250 watching get those likes up people yes please we got 250 people watching please like and Sandy Q for five thank you for that uh, you. says initial thoughts on Banshees of Inishirin I love In Bruges and the trailer for this new film looks amazing. Oh my gosh, Sandy, I have not seen this trailer. I've seen In Bruges, and Bruges is great. Um, but I haven't seen Banshees of Inishirin. Um, I just saw the trailer yesterday. And what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, yeah, it feels very much like In Bruges. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good thing then. Yeah. Sandy, I mean, you know, years you later. Your comment. Yeah. Yellow Flash 2 says, I'll wait for streaming then. Well, Yellow Flash, here's, I have the AMC A-list. It's like 25 bucks a month. I can see three movies a week. I love to go to the movies. I love to go to the movies and not wear a mask. <gasps> so that's what I do. And uh, cause I don't have to. And so I go in and I'll just see whatever, because this industry is important to me. And I want to support films that uh, want to support films like Top Gun Maverick, which I saw several times. Several times. Okay. Uh, Fabio Barbantes uh, became a new YouTube member. Thank you for that. CD Stein 69 says, Alan, as someone that has been on the bullet train to Tokyo, you're absolutely correct. It's about one to 30 ratio on mm-hmm. the train. So it looked a little off. Yeah. I, I thought, yeah, it was weird. Cause there's like that woman that's shushing them. In yes. The quiet train. And she's a white old white lady. I know. I, I like, how, could they not find an old Asian lady to fill this role? Nope. They can't. Um, Zach says, uh, even with the heavy accent, they, she could have said the lines. That's We're going to put this on a T-shirt. And thank you. There are three people that have been sending me T-shirt designs. We haven't even announced this contest. And Glenn Brown, John Holly, and Mason. Mason, I'm sorry, I forgot your last name. Um, have sent amazing T-shirt designs. I'm going to have to show you them on Wednesday next week. But Zach says, quote, too many white people, close quote. That's Alan. Alan, that's your quote. <laughs> Too many white people. Um, in Bruges is coming out on 4K Blu-ray at the end of September. Can't wait, says John Manalang. And B Sparks 917. Hail Alan and Chris and chat. My wife and I saw Bullet Train last night. It was fun, but nothing special. Mm-hmm. That's that's I think that the bottom line. It's fun, but it's not like it doesn't, it didn't stick with me. After I walked out of the yeah. theater, I forgot half the movie. It's one of those where you're like, there's so much action that nothing matters because. I mean, people that you think were killed actually did survive. And you're like, oh, God, like that person should have died. It doesn't. Yeah, but what, what, what did all the survivors have in common? Well, that's all. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, shoot. Alan. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there that. was a work moment. That was it. Uh, yeah. My wife and my wife and I saw Bullet Train last night. It was fun, but nothing special. I probably won't get it until it's on sale. Yeah. It's one of those things where sometimes I'll buy movies digital if they're like, Sometimes Voodoo will have these specials like four ninety nine or like five movies for twenty bucks, and I'll just like eh, these are ones I'd like to have in my collection because I'll watch them again. So yeah. Oh, by the way, we're going to be giving away digital codes for Minions: The Rise of Gru at the end of the show. We're going to be we've got uh, digital download codes um, from Fandango. Yeah, and not the than biggest super fans. Not the Batman says, yeah, filling the train, like Alan said, is odd. It would be like if Tarantino made all Yakuza and Swordsmiths and Kill Bill into everyone not Japanese. Yeah, true. I, I think you could make a comparison between this movie and Kill Bill. I think it was trying to be like Kill Bill and just fell far short from that. And Fear the Turtle 21 for 5 says, a bit late to the chat, so apologies. If I missed it, any thoughts on Sandman? Have never read it, but the trailer has me interested. And oh my God, I feel really terrible because I have no thoughts. I have no thoughts other than my friends who say it looks cool, but they're cautious. I think we're all cautious just because <laughs> like anything that like that looks good, but you know, like the Andor trailer, it's like, that looks cool. Looks definitely better than Kenobi. It looks like a movie, but Disney, Disney Lucasfilm made it. And already the reports about they're comparing Andor to um, 
They're saying it's it, it makes commentary on the Trump administration. I'm like, yeah. why are you doing that? That's not that's that's never been a thing that's that's made anyone intrigued. Now, if there are ideas that are woven in, but as a way to market the movie and a way to speak about the 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 series, a way to speak about the series is terrible. It, that turns me off. I I don't want that. I don't want. Uh, I don't want that kind of commentary, like sort of general. Maybe it's about the, you know, the fall of the Roman Empire, the rise of the Roman Empire, whatever it is. Fine. Something some to history, but modern, you know, what's happening in our modern times. I, I don't know. Maybe leave that to indie movies. Yeah. But here the turn, well, I mean, my apologies. Why would they sabotage their show that way? That, that's yes. my problem. You know, we had good feelings going in. You know, they put out a, a halfway decent trailer. And, they, and now they're going to ruin it, but they think that everyone hates Trump that bad. Well, they need to they need to coach these actors who are morons. They're basically well, um, and the showrunners for and for that some story. directors, some directors and filmmakers refer to actors as meat puppets <laughs> because they're so dumb. Uh, but but um, I have not um, the soundtrack. I don't know how I'm on a channel that. I get a lot of soundtrack stuff for, or I must subscribe. To, I subscribe to music soundtrack channels. What can I say? Uh, movie soundtrack channels. Anyway, so it, can't, it popped up. Um, I will I will check it out and I will have thoughts Fear the Turtle. Deano for five pounds says, which is better, Pitt on a train or Samuel L. Jackson on a plane? I, I'm going to be honest on this one. Pitt on a train mm -hmm. is better than the Sam Jackson on a plane. Snakes on a plane, yeah, it was I mean that was is far that, better than snakes on a plane. That might as that might as well have been snakes on a plane. Might as well have been a Wild Eye releasing movie. Yeah. Which, <laughs> by the way, Wild Eye releasing put we post if you follow the film threat Instagram, we post like weird post like a lot of the videos that we show on during our during this show the live stream. But we also post like weird movie posters, and a movie poster came out. This is we're not gonna. I I'll just I'll just show it to you. I'll just show you this movie poster. So this is like a taste of, if you follow our Instagram, if you follow the film threat Instagram, we get, we do like this thing. Like I love movie posters. I love like, just like weird movie posters. I have a movie poster collection. I like to, I don't know, I like to hang them up and I don't know. There's just, I especially like the ones that are weird. Like have you ever seen the Polish poster for like the Empire Strikes Back or something like that. It's always really weird. But here's an actual poster uh, for a film from a Wild Eye releasing. And it's the, the poster, it says, don't fuck in the woods. <laughs> Two. So that means there was a don't fuck in the woods one. How did we miss don't fuck in the woods? Don't fuck in the woods two is coming out. But um yeah, there you go. And uh, J John Manaling, Keanu in a bus, Pitt in a train, Samuel ja Jackson on a plane. Sounds like something Ted Geisel would have written. <laughs> Dr. Seuss, folks. There you go. And Yellow Flash, too. Yellow Flash, what are you doing in my chat, man? You're He's a big star. He was at Anime Matsuri. We almost got to see what Yellow Flash looked like. We almost got to see what Yellow Flash looked like. Uh, Yellow Flash 2 says, I like that. Meat puppets are good names for most actors. Um, or as uh, Gary Beekler says, adult pretenders. Like that pile of trash Mark Ruffalo. Or or Mark Hamill. It's weird how like there's actors like, I really like that actor. And I actually met Mark Ruffalo like 15 years ago. I think it was 15, around 15 years ago at the Toronto Film Festival. He seemed like a really nice guy. You know that guy had like a had like brain cancer and survived it? kind of crazy um but uh when you look at the like social media posts of people like mark ruffalo and mark hamill it's sort of hard to like it just makes you look at them differently like god you can you just like yeah yeah well, for for actors and filmmakers to hate half their audience and and not think that they need them to continue their careers and support their careers is is mind-boggling to me a actors need like some sort of like they need like some coaching in social media like it's it's fine have your own opinions about things but to denigrate the audience is just like how has that ever worked ever it's, it's, it, it doesn't it doesn't okay and and real quick before we get so so you know your mileage may vary on bullet train it's a mixed review mm -hmm. It's fun, but dumb. You'll forget half the movie when you walk out of the theater, but it's not woke. 
So there if you, you go. If you want to spend two hours in a nice, cool theater and have a decent time, yes, this is a, this is a good movie to see. Yes, the air conditioning and the non-woke film is an upside to this. Uh, Yellow Flash 2 goes on to say, Mark Ruffalo went to theater school, but he's an expert on nuclear power lately. I can't stand him. Yeah, I love that. Like, like I, there's a lot of things I just don't have an opinion on. Um, you know, like Harlan Ellison, who uh, I knew back in the 90s because he would call me and yell at me. I'll tell the story some other day. But Harlan Ellison, if you know who Harlan Ellison is, uh, 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 a brilliant novelist mm -hmm. and a writer wrote what is arguably everybody says the greatest episode of the original Star Trek series, City on the Edge of Forever. Um, uh, Harlan Ellison said, you do, you know, th th there's a common phrase that people say, everyone has the right to their opinion. He doesn't agree with that. Harlan Ellison would tell you, you only have your right to an informed opinion. And there are a lot mm -hmm. of opinions on social media, of people that don't know what the F they're talking about. That's why I post so, so little on Twitter. I just don't like it. It's dumb people yelling at each other.